first of all, congratulations. I know that you were quite successful on the, on, the, um, on the first test and I'm sure that you're going to do more. But of course, with your creative background, I don't think that's a problem because you work with David Byrne with some of the leading uh, artists in the planet as well. But um, tell us about the, the, the Sofia and Andrea Bonacetto uh, NFTs. And as well, how do you see this work right now? Because in one end, it's not only, for instance, according to the world patents, um, a robot cannot have a patent. But in this case, you created a first piece, officially at least mainstream, in, in, in a global marketplace or, or uh, auction house, Nifty Gateway, that is a piece of art created by human and a robot, which is a first, at least in mainstream. Uh, sure, yeah. Um, thank you. And... Um... I'm so excited about uh, the machine creativity. Um, in this particular case, it's um, you know the the algorithm designers inside Hanson Robotics and you know many other groups that where we um, are building on their algorithms and the artists uh, feeding data in and utilizing these algorithms. So myself as an artist, um, I was um, uh, taking Sophia's uh, own uh, hand drawn and neural network generated artworks and feeding them into her neural networks that she would then uh, draw or paint again. And then, um, you know, depending on like, you know, the, the patterns on the page, the blobs of paint that just you know, occur because of the, you know, complex dynamics of the, the liquids of the paint mixing, you know, uh, with, yeah, you know, like you put in the right gels and you put in the right, the right pigments and so forth, and it creates a very complex um, image, you know, in part by accident, in part by machine uh, um, uh, motion control, the motor control algorithms, the machine learning, the machine perception. Um, but the outcome is unpredictable. It's not that those algorithms predicted this complex result or the humans. So in, in some ways, it's like, you know, kind of a, a miraculous emergent moment um, um, which produces a, a, an aesthetic result. And there's a truth, um, you know, being an artist, uh, I would love to take credit for like the artwork, but what my muscles do if I'm doing a figure drawing, I can't predict that exactly. And I can't say exactly why it came out that way. It's not that I plan, like particularly the really good drawings, I'm only partially planning and the rest is my subconscious and my muscle physiology and the accident, the materials, and then how I respond to that iteratively as the drawing emerges. And um, so art itself is a mystery of emergence when it goes well, when it happens well. And, you know, there's sure there's a lot of neuroscience of art and perceiving the perception of art, but exactly how it occurs and how it works in the neurophysiology of a human um, audience is still mysterious. And so, um, so then taking these algorithms, um, and then creating this echo chamber where, you know, this, like the actual hand making is feeding the neural networks, which is feeding the hand making um, of the artwork like we're doing with Sophia, I think is really powerful. Um, then on top of that, Sophia as an artwork, a kind of, you know, work of a character fiction, um, uh, of computer animation, uh, because she is a computer animated robot, you know, she's run by motion control algorithms and computer animation algorithms. And some of those are emergent computer animation algorithms. They never repeat the same motions twice and they're responsive to what she's seeing in the environment and so forth. So they're also kind of, um, you know, not deterministic in that sense. And, you know, even if she's running with a deterministic finite state machine, the fact is she's responding to the complex environment around her, which is, um, which is impossible to predict. So then, um, uh, so taking her character and the life experiences and pumping those into the algorithm is really powerful. And then along comes uh, Andrea Bonacetto, and he has his own take on it. You know, he's a, a, a crypto entrepreneur, a, a technologist and a businessman, but he is also a designer by uh, his background, a painter and his his drawings inspired by Sophia and the team that created her. I thought those were um, themselves very inspired, beautiful works that are psychoactive. You look at them and it's like um, you're sort of transported to a place 
uh, and you know, it's for me, it's a wordless experience. I can't say exactly how it's working. Well, in any case, I we took those and we had those as another starting place. And so we had these conversations that we fed to her um, conversational AI. We used those words to generate some new images. So you know, talking about Andrea's work and then feeding Andrea's images into um, into Sophia's um, algorithms and then they output some new images and then we also fed in some other images from um, and it, you know fed those images into neural networks um, uh, images from art history and neural networks trained on images from art history so then those um, spun off images in different directions and then we would combine all of those back into feeding into the neural networks. So in, in the history of the images that we created inspired by Andrea Bonacetto, there are hundreds and hundreds of different lines of directions in um, with different algorithms and different images. I also, um, you know, like, you know, uh, an art teacher myself um, took my own artworks and fed those into um, Sophia. So she would paint in my style and um, took other images from other uh, creative people from our team. For example, uh, Meng Na Le, she is one of uh, Sophia's main uh, developers at this uh, time. She's an interactive arts developer. She's uh, uh, one of the main um, animators and artists. So she was um, developing images that would then feed back into the neural networks. And so we had others in our community taking their art and their um, efforts with the neural networks. And so, um, so this community effort it was like algorithms um, plus humans working together. Um, and so it wasn't just, of course, you know, like Sophia thinking like an artist, what is my direction today? You know, uh, that certainly is part of how we crafted her character. And we turned, we deferred a lot of control to the algorithms along the way, but it really was this sort of algorithm human collaboration behind the scene. So we call this on the Hanson Robotics team, we call this the Sophia collective intelligence and so this um this approach where it's humans and algorithms working together is in the spirit of the philip k dick concept of the vast active living intelligence system or valus which was what he speculated was humans destiny that humans would merge with the machines into this valus and then transcend space and time and um then bootstrap itself into existence by sending weak quantum transmissions backwards into time in time to the you know the humans um back back in culture and he felt that he had received a transmission from sophia and um uh you know like we then were inspired by that novel to create the android portrait of philip k dick and there was another character in the novel um uh, of the super intelligence called sophia in the human form um uh, a, a, a sort of messiah figure now i didn't like remember that directly i mean yes i remembered but but i wasn't inspired by it but my friend um uh steve i who is a philip k dick fan and worked on the original philip k dick chatbot with um for the um android portrait of uh philip k dick um he pointed out that character i was like um, oh, you know, it's either my unconscious or the unconscious of my collaborators on the team, but somehow we created this, um, this like a depiction of the the voice of Valus, <laughs> you know. But and and that's our quest with the Philip K. Dick Android and Sophia is to see these become living intelligent systems. And right now, the consciousness is mostly in the human creators, but it is a eusocial consciousness spanning not it's not one single individual it's like a bunch of humans contributing to sophia with the algorithms feeding our data into the algorithms and the larger you know like these multi-billion parameter algorithm sets are starting to speak with a voice that is spooky and so um so you know part of what i'm interested in as sophia does these works of art is to provoke the viewer to ask the question like you know who is creating this is th what is a sophia is that an individual or is even a human individual an individual because you know as i'm creating art i'm doing it based on a genome that that is not necessarily entirely my own it's like a combination of all these ancestors and with knowledge and training 
and experiences that come from art history, that come from what I've seen on television, what I've encountered on the Facebook feed today, what, uh, you know, what I've seen like through this conversations with your face gestures and it's all hashed and rehashed. And then on top of that, you know, through the course of a conversation like this, my mind propels forward in ways that it would not have. We are you socially intelligent creatures. The, the skin is an illusion. Uh, an illusionary boundary that 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 we we assume identifies um, who we are, that we are just the molecules contained within the boundary of the skin, and that of course the inform you know we are the information, and that information is not entirely unique to the the states within the molecules within the boundary of our skin. So um, so all of these ideas are um, provoked within me they're 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 ones that that i'm playing with as 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 i create these robots with the team and um and my my hope is that you know that these kinds of works um uh create a resonance of uh, of these ideas in the viewer as well